Americans, also known as the Kingston of Color Struck, and I'm here and I'm late. Actually, I'm probably early, probably going to be one of the first people to make a video about this. The teacher in Baltimore, um, I can't remember, was Harlem something school in Baltimore and Maryland. Lost her cool with her class. I'm pretty sure those are high schoolers. Lost her, her cool and the words, uh, you were punk ass in words, you're punk ass niggers who will be shot. Now, um, we all know what happened with Baltimore uh, some year ago, a year, year or change ago, but over the Freddie Gray incident. Man had his spine broken, died um, at the hospital. By the, he had his spine broken by the police. The police got off. And uh, recently, we elected Donald Trump, who is called for law and order, kind of like Reagan did. Kind of like Reagan did, and um, was it or was it Nixon? Let's get them mixed up. Kind of like Reagan did. Law, the law and order president, whoever was the law and order president, I think it was Reagan. And we have the climate where this happens. Now, this teacher, I don't know her story. I don't know if that class is just always terrible to her. But at this point, I want you guys to know, as a school teacher, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. If you need help, you need to get help from the school. If the school is not helping you, you need to talk to the county. If the county not help to, helping you, you need to talk to the state. They will get you help. In a and honestly, I really believe it's more of a classroom management thing because it's clear because nobody's paying attention. Because you're, you're always going to have the one or twos. In the older class, you're always going to have the ones and twos, maybe even fives. I got a, a sixth grade class that is off the chain. I figured out how to deal with them. They stand in the hallway until they're ready to, until they're ready, until they show me that they're ready to come in my class. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. The point is, it doesn't matter what the story is. One, that underlining racism flew out of her mouth, created by, I don't know, the climate at the school, the climate in the United States of America, and her upbringing. It all came out in one sentence. Now, there are going to be some people who are apologists. Oh, she meant that if they keep acting that way and if they keep acting this way, then they're going to get shot by the police and that they're acting like N-words. She meant it because she she felt it in her soul. No, no. Like I said, I do head start all the way to sixth grade. For some reason, the sixth graders and the fourth graders, and it's one fourth grade class. The sixth graders and the fourth graders are off the chain for me. But I had to learn to adapt as a teacher. Now, I'm not all the way there. I have some years to go. And even so, apparently, you still have to keep adapting because children change, because technology change, and situations change, and economics change, and all types of stuff. So I will never be a perfect teacher, and I'm pretty sure she's not the perfect teacher. And I'm not even going to uh, point all the blame at her because it's possible that the school is at fault here, too. But she at some at whatever point it is that you feel that you're losing yourself then you need to go get help you need to go get help if you're losing control of your class every every teacher is going every teacher needs that break away from the kids from the students okay but to me what that looked like I'm not no expert I just started teaching to me, it almost looked like the class that I was having maybe uh, three weeks ago when I realized with these sixth graders, I have to be a certain way because otherwise they're going to eat me alive. And with her, I don't know what it is. There's no classroom management. Clearly, what she also needs is to, like I said, adapt with the students. And there are a lot of students, there are a lot of teachers who are like, nope, I'm not adapting because I'm better than this or you, I don't even want to be here. And that could be the case. She didn't really want to be where she's at. She didn't adapt with them. She's just going to teach the way she wants to teach. And the reason why it, it's like freaking is knuckle on knuckle instead of, you know, connections is, you know, mega, you trying to fit Lego blocks on top of mega, mega blocks. It's not working. That's how I feel or what it looked like. And I'm 
kind of angry because what's going to happen, mark my words, she's going to lose her job. And we're going to clap it up and act happy. But the moment she loses her job, she's going to have 10 other schools calling her because they feel sympathetic to, with her. And it's going to be predominantly white schools. Come and teach with us. We have better students, which isn't even the case. <laughs> we have better students. She didn't want to be there. Most likely, I feel like she doesn't want to be there. That's probably why this whole thing happened. I, like I said, I really don't know. It just looks like like she don't really want to be there the way she uh, she's too angry. And once you get to that point, you need to be able to <laughs> distance yourself. She could be a first year teacher like me too and having her first time. But I don't I don't know about that. She looks like she's been there for a while. She has a t-shirt on. She doesn't look like nervous like I was. I had I was crazy. This is a dress shirt actually right here. But anyway, don't matter. Watch. Mark my words. She's gonna lose her job. And some other predominantly white public school are, is going to give her a job. Mark my word. She's going to be working again. I'm Watch it happen. Watch. And while those students are going to miss out, and I don't really know what happened, I'm just, from my own perspective, before this gets on the news, unfortunately, we just made her famous. Now she is Twitter famous. She's Twitter famous for calling a bunch of black students the N-word. I wish I could have stopped that because we need to stop making these people famous. That's what's going to get her the 100 job offers. Instead, if we go, if we could take care of this, have taken care of this a little quietly, maybe she would have lost her job or she or she would have lost her job and would have to have, she would have a harder time trying to find another job opposed to making her famous. Then somebody feeling sympathetic for her, seeing her on TV, seeing her on the internet. Boom, we're going to give her a job because we don't have that many nigger students in our school. Mark my words, that's what exactly what's about to happen. Um, if I could put the video up or I'll put a link up, I guess. We're about to make it famous. It's already famous. It's too late. I really wish I could have stopped it. Unfortunately, that's not what's about to happen. She's about to get famous. She's going to lose her job and find another job. And she's going to have people talking about how she turn her they're gonna eventually turn her basically turn her to the victim and she could be the victim in this case but like i said the climate of the the school climate of the united states and the, her upbringing brought out that n-word brought out the i'm gonna shoot you crap doesn't matter what she meant she said what she said unfortunately <sighs> okay let's get ready for another fucking shit storm on about how black kids are thugs and not how we're hiring people and we're not properly training people. We're just throwing them in a classroom and not get, helping them with class management skills or seeing if they actually want to be there or seeing if they are culturally, right, uh, well, whether they will culturally adapt. Okay, bye. Have a good day.